Would Hungary consider an exit from the EU if relations continue to deteriorate? No, 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 obviously not. Uh, our place is in the European Union. Uh, our interest is uh, European Union to be strong. But the debate is about how to get there. Because, uh, you know, there's a, uh, there's a serious debate within the European Union about the future of the European Union, which is no wonder because we are faced with uh, historic type of challenges. So uh, we don't consider it as bad news that we have debate within the European Union because why sh when should we have a debate about the future if not now when the historic challenges are ahead of us? So, uh, and and we, we even think that all those who are on the other side in this debate, their goal is to make European Union strong. Now the question is which way to choose? And our way is a more sovereignist way because we propose that uh, we need to make the member states strong based on which we will have a strong European Union. Others, the Federalists say, or the representatives of the federal approach say, that we need a kind of a United States of Europe, where the member states are weakened, and then based on these weakened member states, a stronger integration can be built. We think it's a dead end street. We think it's, it's absolutely not possible. Uh, we think that we need strong member states, and that's, uh, that creates a debate now. But, uh, but of course, our interest is to make European Union strong, and we, of course, of course, will remain uh, members of the of the European Union. Can you comment on Brexit? Then, uh, you know, if you're saying that, then how do you guys continue to support the decision of the UK people? Well, you know, we regretted a lot that decision, but we respected it. We never judged, never commented, unlike the European commissioners, for example, uh, because we think that it is only the British people who have a right to express their opinion about the future of the United Kingdom. We, though we regretted that because, you know, with the British leaving, the, the debates about the future of the EU will be much more unbalanced. Because the UK was kind of a leading voice when it comes to rationality, when it comes to uh, uh, more important role for national parliaments, when it comes to a sovereignist approach. So it, now the debate will be more unbalanced, number one. Number two, we regretted their decision because that will uh, cause another uh, economic challenge for the European Union. Uh, UK represents 14% of the, um, of the uh, economic achievement or performance of the European Union, 14%, one seventh. So we will lose that. Uh, and and we are real, that's why we are really pushing for a deep and comprehensive free trade agreement between the European Union and the United Kingdom. Because if it is not the case, and the WTO rules apply when it comes to uh, the uh, trade or economic and investment type of cooperation between UK and the EU, then it will cause uh, additional difficulties to us. Because European Union unfortunately proved to be very slow, like a snail, uh, when it comes to uh, free trade agreements. So the last free trade agreement, which was signed by European Union and then fully implemented, uh, dates back to 2011 with the Republic of Korea. So seven years, seven years we have not uh, concluded talks about free trade agreement in a way that that agreement would have been fully implemented. And, uh, and if uh, we are not able to do so with the, uh, with the British either, then uh, it can cause uh, tremendous difficulties for us. I want to get your reaction to the populist movement that's building momentum in Italy. Well, you know, um, we understand very well that um, during the uh, last national parliamentary elections in all EU member states, be it Hungary, be it Italy, uh, be it the Austrian election, the main issue of the election was the migration. And the main division line between parties was how they approached the migration issue. And in Austria, in Hungary and in Italy, anti-migration parties uh, have won the elections. And I think that, um, that uh, Minister of Interior, Mr. Salvini, is a very serious person. And his decision not to allow uh, ships operated by so-called NGOs, uh, full of illegal migrants. Uh, so not to allow such kind of ships to enter any Italian harbor is a real game changer. Because that decision of uh, Minister Salvini has proven that yes, it is possible to protect the maritime border. You know, I find it um, really tragical or frustrating that so far the European Union uh, has taken it as a definition or as a fact that the maritime border on the Mediterranean Sea cannot be protected. Yes, it can be. I mean, look at the Australians. 
and they have longer maritime border than the, than the whole Mediterranean Sea and they are able to protect it. So I think it's a game changer uh, uh, from the perspective of European migration policy, what has been going on in Italy after the latest elections. The campaign against Soros' influence has led to Open Society Foundation and Central European University saying that they're going to leave Budapest. Do you think the influence of Soros will now weaken in Hungary or do you think he will regroup and use countries like Germany to put pressure on your government? Well, you know, we have a serious and open debate with him. Uh, we have totally different visions, visions about the future of Europe. Thus, we have totally different visions about the future of Hungary as well. We don't like his concept of uh, changing the composition of the European population. We don't like his concept, uh, which kind of would like to get over the, um, uh, the nation-state concept or phenomenon. We don't like the European approach, which would like to get into a post-national, post-Christian era. No, we don't like that. We think that strong European Union can only be built on strong member states. So we need strong nation states in order to have a, a strong Europe. So we have an open debate with George Soros. And George Soros made it very clear, you know, that his interest is to fire the Hungarian government. But uh, then why should we be silent? And why shouldn't we argue in favor of our own position? And yes, uh, George Soros pays a, a number of NGOs in Hungary, which openly became political actors, which openly took part in the election campaign, which openly supported the opposition. But then the outcome was clear. There was a record turnout, 70%, and 49.6% uh, of the votes uh, uh, went to our party on our own. And, uh, and we have gained another constitutional majority for the third uh, consecutive uh, uh, time. When it comes to the university, you know, to be honest, we are really fed up with, the, um, with uh, European media and European politicians lying about the situation. Because no one would like to shut down any university in Hungary. The thing is that uh, he must comply with the national regulations. And we cannot make an exception. Why should we make an exception with anyone? There's a clear national regulation which says that you can only issue a diploma of another country if you have a school or education activity in that given country. So like McDaniel College from Maryland has a school in Hungary, has a school in the United States. So yes, of course, they can issue two diplomas in Hungary, one Hungarian, one US. But so far, see, you didn't have any kind of school here. So why should we allow them uh, to issue a diploma of a country where they don't have an education program. It's a matter of, um, of legal system. Instead of, uh, you know, complying with the national legal system, they created, um, they created scandal, uh, they lied uh, all over, as if there was any kind of attempt to close their university. No, they have a European university, they have a Hungarian university as well, which has all registration, all licenses, all permissions, no problem. But they can only issue Hungarian diploma because the school is in Hungary. You mentioned Christians, Christian persecution and whatnot, and I know that you are coming back, I think, to meet sure. with the State Department next month. Uh, walk me through sort of the religious freedom, uh, the priority that you guys are yeah. placing on that in, in your country, as well as some of the actions by your government to help Christians being persecuted. You know, we are a Christian country. Uh, and we have to emphasize that because uh, currently under a mainstream liberal media, if you say so, uh, you must be very brave. So that's why very proudly I want to say again that we are a Christian country. Uh, and that's why we have a special responsibility to protect our Christian brothers and sisters all around the world. Because my question is that if we don't protect them, who will protect them? If we don't speak in favor of them, who will speak in favor of them? And uh, I'm pretty much uh, frustrated with the approach in Europe. You know, whenever we come together foreign ministers and, I, uh, and we negotiate about the situation in the Middle East and I, uh, and I raise the issue of, uh, of protecting uh, Christian uh, communities, uh, the others always want to speak about uh, protecting uh, religious minorities. But, you know, my fault is about the Christian communities and if it is on my fault, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this shows very well that the hypocrisy is still there, unfortunately. So, uh, for us, protecting Christian uh, communities is of utmost importance. We have even established a separate department 
in our Ministry of uh, Human Capacities, which has only one duty, one responsibility to deal with the uh, destiny of the persecuted uh, Christian communities all over the world. We send them money. Uh, bishops uh, from leading Christian communities from the uh, Middle East come uh, very often to see our Prime Minister. We give them financial assistance to be able to, to, to get stronger where they have been living. Uh, we build uh, schools. We take part in uh, covering medical costs of their hospitals. We rebuild their torn down uh, uh, houses. We give them scholarships. So we try to strengthen them where they are. You know, they usually ask us for not encouraging members of the Christian communities to leave their homes. Uh, they want or they ask us to help them to stay where they had been living for centuries, basically, or even more, uh, and to, to be stronger there. So that's why we rather help them to, to, to get stronger in their places where they, they, they have been originally living.